Welcome to another Duke Family Adventure, NASA Part 2. Yes, we are back at uh, Kennedy Space Center. We did a little bit of the Visitor's Complex. That's our first vlog. We'll post that one, uh, post that one right up uh, above us. And uh, this time we're headed out to the Apollo Saturn V Complex. And we're going to get to see some of the fun things there. Uh, I think we're, there's a little uh, um, experience of like you're actually at Mission Control, so that'll be cool. So we're going to see what else they have out there. So please come and join us for our second day at NASA Space Center, Kennedy Space Center. All right, so we're gonna head out to the bus tour. They begin at 9.30. They take you out, as I said, the Apollo and Saturn V launch sites. Be sure to check your times as to when these buses go and when they come back. And here's where you get on the bus tours, return to the moon. And you can get your Starbucks before you head out to the launch pads. So this is the uh, little pre-show before going into the building here. This is Mission Control. This is the firing launch control for the Apollo mission. This is not a mock-up. These are the very consoles we sat at when men first took off to fly to the moon. The tragedy of Apollo 1 had put us a year and a half behind. We were making up for it in one big leap. And we were doing it with a rocket that no man had ever flown before. You are now in the final minutes before the launch of Apollo 8. Right here, where it actually happened. Mankind is about to leave his planet behind and journey to another. It is one of those rare moments when history is not being made, destiny is being embraced. GPSS, verify go for launch. GPSC, verify go for launch. GPSC, verify go for launch. SRO, verify go for launch. LM, verify go for launch. And I guess it's the only one that can take you to another planet. 
I actually got to fly one on the second flight of the moon called uh, Apollo 13. But uh, that's another story. So this is a real Saturn V rocket. enthusiastic about space. So I picked up the phone one day and I called Mr. Rogers. Hello. Hello. Turned out that he was doing a series of shows for the children that had to do with fathers leaving home and then coming back. Fathers go to the store and they come back. Fathers go on a trip and they come back at the end of the trip. Fathers go to the moon and they come back. Perfect. It fits right in with what we're trying to do. Part of the taping that we did was a list of questions that he had from the children. So he'd go through this list and, and I would answer the ones that I could, but most of them I couldn't because I hadn't been in space. So I suggested to Fred that I carry the list with me and we could talk about it after the flight. We've been thinking about you all day today, expecting your visit. Well, I've been thinking a lot about you too and I brought something back with me. It says, this envelope with children's questions was carried to the moon. And that's what we did. And I ended up doing eight or nine or 10 shows with There's them. There's the mission that we saw, Borman, Lovell, and Anders. Their figure eight, their slingshot around the backside of the moon, back to Earth. How cool is that? So the next time you complain about having to study for a test, just remember the manual. I want my MTV. This was the logo. This is what they would start off the broadcast on when they introduced MTV, the real MTV. Let's just say it like that, not MTV today. They'd have a man on the moon. Certainly no uh, loss for press pennies. Find all them here. Souvenir coins, collectible medallions, all that stuff. lunar module sitting in there that they had to go around and dock with when they did their missions. So this is a, a real cool shot of the uh, assembly building there. Now a couple of facts as she was saying on the bus, I'm going to get this right, four and a half Empire State buildings could fit in there. I don't know how many football fields she said because I couldn't hear that was flag on the other side of the building is 21 stories tall 21 stories tall can't see it from here but on the other side section is the size of an nba basketball court wow and there's a much a better view close view of the new rocket that's going to head up to the moon very cool so this is a pre Inspiring tribute to Dr. Harrison Hagen Schmidt exploring a valley on the moon. Apollo 17. On Apollo 17. And so out here they have the Moon Rock Cafe that I think we're going to go explore some food. Get some moon cafe or moon food. But I do see the lunar module over here. Got to go take a Ladies look at gentlemen. it. Now this is a really cool exhibit. A model up, model of uh, a mock-up is what I meant to say. A model of the moon. Lunar module. Astronaut. Didn't see the second astronaut. Cool stuff from Apollo 17. 
I don't know if they were the first moon rovers, but... Very cool. All right, so we're gonna go into the NASA vault here. All right, we're gonna head into the vault. How cool is this re-entry model? Module, re-entry module. Well, thank you, this is, this is, if my dirtiness can help someone. That inside, wow, three astronauts in there. Crazy news. So cool little area for Apollo 13, a successful failure. And then some piece of the Aquarius that ended up being, not supposed to be, but ended up being the life support. And here they are on the uh, Navy ship as they were rescued. So all kinds of different suit and how they evolved. Now this this looks like something out of I don't know what. Deep sea diving. I'm not sure what that that's crazy. And here's one from nineteen sixty four. And here's the more hip version. How would you like to do a vlog on this camera? And here's the television camera. And here's the in-flight. A little more comfortable. Looks like Jim Lovells. Wow, what's some that's for extravehicular activity. So some very cool things here in the vault. Moon rocks, equipment, space suits. Definitely check it out. This next little exhibit is the uh, lunar module cockpit, the interior component. Crazy. Walking on the moon. Peaks. You gotta touch a moon rock. I'm gonna take a picture touching a moon rock. Cool. Touch a moon rock, bud. It's a lunar sample, 70,000. No, 70 million, 215,000. Astrovan. They could have been a little bit more extravagant, don't you think? Come on, NASA. They're putting a man in the moon. All right, so we're going to go into the White Grissom Chaffee Apollo 1. So this is some artifacts and personal belongings of the three that passed away in the fire.
Alright, so we're going to go take a look at the uh, moon garden, as you can read here. Some of these seeds were taken from uh, actually the moon, or carried to the moon. Yes, let's get that correct. There are no seeds or plants on the moon. They were carried to the moon on a mission, okay? So just wanted to be very clear about that. All right, so here in the moon seed garden, each one of these trees were planted in honor of the missions. So this is Apollo 11. Won't show them all, but just give you an idea. Very pretty area. I think most people know these famous words, the eagle has landed. That's fitting, commissioned by Rocket Mortgage. <laughs> Very cool. Collins, Armstrong, Aldrin. Very cool. All right, and here's the tree to, commem to commemorate three, Apollo 13, John Swaggart, Fred Hayes, and James Lovell. Right there they are. Houston? We've had a problem. So I guess Tom Hanks didn't make that up. Right there, you got it, James. Right there. James Lovell said it. Houston, we got a problem. Sorry, I'm standing in the shadow here. This is interesting. So Apollo 16. So the story of Apollo 13, Charles Duke gave Ken Mattingly the measles but then they got to go together. How cool is that? Apollo 16. We saw the same sign out there in the front, but I don't think we really recognize. So this, this uh, area over here is in the shape of a figure eight, which is sort of the flight pattern that they do going to the moon. Using basically, I think, the moon's gravity to kind of trajectory. So that's pretty cool. We're gonna try some freeze-dried ice cream. Neapolitan style. All right. So it actually looks like a real ice cream sandwich. Oh, that's cool. All right, you got the strawberry part. Wow. Good thing we were, unfortunately we were not in space, or else that would have... <laughs> Good? Good. Actually it tastes like strawberry. Good? Does it explode all over the place? But if you like science, you might want to know that these were originally developed for the Apollo missions. The space tree is frozen to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit, vacuum dried, and then placed into a pouch like this one. Pretty cool. Cool. They have the logo thing on there, oh, well, no, probably not. All right, let's go take a look at some of the rockets here at Rocket Garden. Now, we did take the tour, but it was very hard to hear him. So, I thought we'd just kind of tell you some of the things that they talked about. We're not going to do all the rockets here. So one of the things I wanted to point out as we're showing this rocket here, all the rockets, with the exception of, let me pan over here slowly so I don't give you hurts, this one right here, all the other rockets are actual rocket readies, put it that way. This is a mock rocket, but all the rest of them could have gone up in space. So that was cool. Now the other thing you will notice on all these rockets, they all say NASA, or United States, something of that sort. Except for this one right here. Uh, this rocket right here is the Juno 1. Now, what's interesting about this rocket, let's pan back here. The rocket does not say United States or U or uh, NASA. It says UE. So, I'm not going to go over all the uh, 007 James Bond stuff of how they figured the UE out. I'm just going to say, if you've ever driven down I-10 past Huntsville, Alabama, you will see NASA there. That is where they developed the rockets. That's what the UE convoluted stands for, Huntsville, Alabama. You figure out how they got there. But anyway, that was thought was interesting. All the rest of them all say United States, NASA, some sorts. But that one, one of the first, the Juno, it did not say that. 
All right, so thank you for joining us for our day two here at Kennedy Space Center. What a lot of fun. Uh, still didn't do everything we wanted to see. Didn't get to see the IMAX, tons of stuff. There's another new uh, thing opening up here in April. So we're gonna head back for that. So anyway, uh, with that said, Keegan and Brielle, take us out. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click that notification bell. Bye. Bye. Onward to our next space adventure.